Sometimes even the most ridiculous or low level of villains can seem insanely powerful. And at other times, even the most powerful of villains can come up with some of the most useless schemes ever. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. It's me, Amanda. And I'm Adam. And today we want to know what villain do you think has the best evil plots? Mm. And at number 10 is Cyber. Adamantium encased arms and body, claws that inject victims with hallucinogens, mutant psychic tracking abilities, and even the ability to cast his consciousness into other bodies. Silas Burr has, or at least had, a truckload of impressive abilities and should be a huge threat, but he just kinda isn't. I'm not really sure why Cyber has been made to just kind of suck, but he really has. He was even responsible for giving Wolverine one of his most severe beatings up until that point in his very long life, and was partially responsible for not only Wolverine's training, but Dawkins as well. But in the gallery of Wolverine rogues, he just doesn't really have anything else to his name. He mainly worked as a lackey to other people, and even though he has all the advantages that he has, he doesn't really become much of an issue for his opponents. He trained Dokken, but that boy takes Cyber down pretty readily. I believe at this point he is on his fourth or fifth body as the new Hornet, and he has transitioned to be a villain for Ben Riley's Scarlet Spider. And nothing against Scarlet Spider, I like that character, but Marvel downgraded him from Wolverine to not Spider-Man. Number nine. Starlet. Starlet is a villain that we get to meet in the series Batman White Knight Presents Harley Quinn, which I gotta say, even now, I'm kind of still reflecting on this on this series. At first I read it, I wasn't, I didn't feel super impressed, but it stuck with me a lot, which I think is a testament to it. The artwork in that series is also really beautiful, and honestly, I think it's worth a read just for that, but the story, a twisted sort of criminal mystery slash drama, is also quite good in this six issue mini. Starlet is the villain of the tale, with her true identity being revealed later on. Harley joins the case to help apprehend Starlet as a consultant. Starlet is targeting old Hollywood stars and killing them in Gotham as part of her plot. I don't want to spoil the ending of this one in case you want to read it, but you have yet to do so, so I will just say this. While Starlet is revealed to have some inside information, which is a big part of what makes the villain so deadly and ruthless, Starlet's weakness lies in their capacity to think logically and overestimate their value. In other words, a classic villain weakness in my opinion, that of ego or hubris, alas. And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we're talking about here, and you love basically characters that are kind of off kilter, but have some pros and have some cons, be sure to check out our top 10 weirdest playlist where we talk about a lot of characters that basically are that. Number eight, Stiltman. Oh, Stiltman. No list of useless or less than impressive villains is complete without his inclusion. He is the biggest joke in Marvel's villain community and has been embarrassingly defeated by a large number of heroes, most of whom have much larger fish to fry. But his stilts, top notch feet of engineering. What are some uses we can think of for his stilts? I mean, outside of obviously reaching the top shelf or painting the hard to reach spots in a room, I could see this being incredibly useful for construction work or for firefighters or any kind of emergency service. Outdoors electrical work would be a breeze if you wouldn't need to use one of those big skyjack cranes. Window washing would be a big one. I mean, they could even be used for transportation. You know how much faster you would get from place to place with legs being that long? I think we can agree being able to stand at 290 feet would have a ton of helpful uses, but fighting superheroes is very clearly not one of them. Number 7, KG Beast. KG Beast has to be one of the most embarrassing villains around in the comics, in my opinion. Despite being a supposedly trained and extremely gifted fighter and tracker, half the time or more it seems like he misses his shots in terms of completing hits tasked to him, and he almost always ends up dead. Like. Not a great assassin, I'm just saying. More recently, this once again happened when he threatened the life of Barbara Gordon and came face to face with Nightwing once more in the Nightwing series. Important to note that here, KG Beast was the one to make Dick Grayson forget who he was before, causing him to become Rick Grayson. This was during an attempt on Nightwing's life, following him being shot. So as you can imagine as well, KG Beast was pretty handily defeated here, especially once the Titans sort of came in to assist a bit and Nightwing's friends came in to assist. Just wasn't it wasn't a good time for KG Beast again. Nightwing lived, but for a time would have amnesia and think he was Rick. And it was a weird time, and we all like to pretend it didn't happen, but it did, so we have to acknowledge it. And not only did KG Beast fail this mission, because he was basically tasked with trying to kill Nightwing, but he also ended up left for dead in an Arctic tundra of Russia. Batman basically used his grappling gun to paralyze KG Beast. This was during his time hunting him, which caused KG Beast to break his neck. Then after Afterwards, despite 
Anatoly's begging, Batman refused to help him. He was just like, I'm just gonna leave you here. And KG Beast was like, but wait a minute, don't you have to like help people? And he was like, I think if I just leave you here, it's I didn't kill you, just a thing that happened, you know? So bye. Number six, Johnny Soro. As someone who used to be a silent film actor before turning to a life of crime, it's almost fitting that the powers he eventually attained were all about his physical appearance. While battling the Justice Society of America, Johnny got torn apart as he was teleported to the subtle realms. Here, this incredibly terrifying eldritch being called the King of Tears reformed Soro with this new terrifying form that could literally cause people to pass away as soon as Soro removed his mask. He was intangible with his mask on, could teleport, levitate, and manipulate energy, but he still kind of ended up being a huge disappointment. Unfortunately, his main power didn't always work the way he intended. The wizard Shazam, as an example, was only turned to stone by Johnny Soro, and in the case of Captain Adam, he just exploded and quantum leaped through time, which is kind of just a weird alternative, but comic books got a comic book. His ability also doesn't work on people who are blind. So when Dr. Midnight faced him, nothing happened, and Midnight simply showed Johnny a recorded image of his face which paralyzed Soro and let the superheroes destroy him. He has come back from this somehow, but he's just never been as threatening as you might assume he could be. Number 5, Jan Rog. Jan Rog is just one of the most ridiculous villains out there in my opinion. He is from the Kree race and as such has an enhanced physiology, but beyond that he is supposed to be a menacing military leader who at one point threatened Marvel, Kree champion and also also a military leader. Jan Rog was a colonel in the Kree Imperial Army, who is extensively trained in both armed and unarmed combat. And the Kree themselves are known for their military prowess and excellence as well as advanced tech. But for some reason, Jan Rog is rarely successful in his plots to defeat either Marvel or later on one of his successors, Carol Danvers. Jan Rog, for a brief time, was known as Magnetron, being revealed to have survived the Psyche Magnetron explosion and gained his own powers as a result. Because, of course, Carol also gained her powers from that, but then later we learned she was also part Kree. But, anyways, moving along. At one point, Jan Rog tries to call home to the Kree Empire and attempts to make a deal with them, but not even they are willing to take him seriously, having seemingly forgotten who he was after all these years with him likely having been presumed dead after going MIA. Jan Rog call home. <laughs> Home says, no, we don't want any of that. <laughs> Bye. Number four, Pace Pot Pete. Peter Petrusky developed this incredibly strong glue that could have been the key to a long, prosperous, money-filled life if he had decided to sell it or develop it further, or heck, even be a hero with it. The glue was handy. He could have been someone. But instead, this big old dingus became a criminal. But what's even better is that not only did he rob himself of a bright, non-criminal future, since he decided to call himself Pace Pot Pete, and his main shtick was frickin' glue, he became the laughing stock of all the villains. Except for maybe Stiltman. Sure, Peter did turn things around slightly when he changed his name to Trapster, but like, not really. The damage was done. His glue could be useful in so many different ways, not even just day-to-day -day stuff, like he could have gone into construction or, or art, and I'm sure he could have even found a way to get into weapons manufacturing as he even was able to develop a weapon for firing the glue, but no, this Goomba squandered it all to become the butt end of a joke. It's a shame. Number 3, Belasco. I mean, Belasco is supposed to be one of the most menacing guys at Marvel Comics, right? He's basically like a demon lord of hell and a former ruler of Limbo, which you know is a hellish dimension, so I don't mean an actual demon lord of hell, but like Limbo's kind of like hell. And I'll grant you that on paper, he does seem pretty scary. But then there is the fact that he also kidnapped a young mutant so he could mold her into his own weapon, and she, well, I mean, she ended up kicking his butt, so that she rightfully should. Now granted, this young mutant wasn't just anyone, it was magic, and we all know that Elyana is a straight up powerhouse, a force to be reckoned with. But the hilarious part is that Velasco is so egotistical that he thought he could just turn magic into whatever he needed her to be, using her, and in the end, he kind of created his own worst enemy by ever bringing her to Limbo to begin with. So. Yeah. In at number two, Mr. Mixlepidilic. Now, hear me out. I need to make it clear that I am actually a big fan of Mr. Mix. He's really, really cool and just a blast to read. But as a villain, he's not exactly the greatest of them. He doesn't do more than be a pest to Superman and is even a pest to Superman's villains, mainly Lex Luthor. He has benefited Superman way more than he's hindered the guy. He is kind of 
kind of worthless as a villain, I'm sorry. But that doesn't change the fact that he is one of the most powerful guys around, being a reality warping fifth dimensional imp. He's just responsible with his reality warping powers because he knows the damage it could cause. But that essentially means he isn't really a huge threat. We have seen his same powers but in the hands of an actual villain when we got the Emperor Joker storyline, and that pretty much shows us exactly the kind of things Mr. Mix is actually capable of. It's a lot, but he doesn't do any of that. Instead, he just tries to give the Man of Steel a bit of a headache, which he does succeed at doing. Still, being Superman's number one fan makes him kind of a useless villain, but I am open to being corrected in the comments. Number one, Sleaze. Sleaze, wow. I mean, I think it's hilarious how much evil Sleaze could really be doing as a villain, like on like a huge scale, considering how powerful he is, and yet he chooses to basically just be like a huge creep instead, which you know, is definitely evil in its own way, but it's still on a much smaller scale. That's interesting to me. You might know Sleaze from one of his sleaziest plots. To get back at Darkseid, he planned to force Big Barda and Superman to make a special tape. I can't say it on YouTube, but you know what you know what I mean. He hoped to make enough money to build himself an army, which he could use to then get revenge on Darkseid for banishing him. I don't even really know how that would work because then you'd have American dollars and like, can you use those in space? And or was he gonna make a human army? Because that probably wouldn't be too great against Darkseid. Sleaze himself, however, he's a new god. So even without capturing Big Barda or her Mega Rod, he could probably be operating much more high-level schemes and even possibly throw threatening the entire Justice League. But because he's mainly just a huge creep, he usually just comes up with the weirdest, grossest plots and fortunately is stopped at almost every corner. Thank goodness. I mean, not every corner, but almost every corner. What a gross character. Sleaze has been shown to possess powers that allow him to alter his size, make others feel emotion, especially deep compulsions of desire. He can also drain energy or powers, and can even take control of, or at least heavily influence his enemy's mind. So yeah, he should be doing a lot more stuff, but um, he's Sleaze, and he was made by John Burns, so he's just kind of a gross weirdo. Well, looks like that's all the time we got for today. I'm Adam Andrews. And I'm Amanda McKnight. And you, stay nerdy, YouTube. We'll catch you on the flippy flop. Peace out. Bye.